how did Cecilia get me to believe the nonsense stories of everything she claimed to be, of every ability she claimed to have? Well, growing up, I've always known, you know, there's two sides, two dramatic sides to life, you know, good and bad, dark and evil, uh, God versus Satan, um, and as much as there are things that happen in God's kingdom, in all aspects, there would be to the opposite extreme the same happening on Satan's side. Uh, and without going into this part of my life, it was also not unusual for me. Um, I do not know how I'm going to explain that in the book. Um, I already knew by that point, very, very strongly, that there were legitimately things like practicing Satanists or, or occultists, however you want to word it, of things that they did, who they were, abilities. I'd never seen, except obviously in movies, but you can't use that legitimately, but I'd never seen in person the bulk of the things Cecilia claimed in my life, before I'd met her, but I knew that they were legitimate, I just never experienced it. But even with that knowledge, even though I knew those things existed, uh, obviously it did make it easier for me to believe that it was possible at the very least. But the one thing, there was two things actually that Cecilia did. She produced a lot of supposed photos of her when, from when she was younger. Uh from when uh, photos of her walking on water, levitation, uh, during ritual practices, turning into a wolf. Uh, there was a lot of photos. And they actually looked like real photos, but the one thing that did confuse me is that Cecilia didn't exactly look like Cecilia in these supposed younger photos of her. But, you know, you do get people that change quite a bit as they grow up. So, and in this photo, Cecilia was supposedly in her teenage years. And when I met Cecilia, she was in her late 20s or mid 20s, somewhere around there. I'll have to work it out. So she could have just changed, you know, physically as she grew up. But it did confuse me, and it did bug me, but that was my reasoning. And then the other thing, the thing that ultimately pushed me to wholeheartedly believing everything she claimed, everything that she said, and I still honestly do not know how she did this, because... It baffles me still even now. Um, there's no possible way she could know without actually having an ability. Or a bunch of really wildly accurate, accurate guesses. Which is actually impossible to have, but I do not know how she did this. Um, uh, yeah, it, uh, but anyway, what she would do is... Pretty much from day one, actually, of meeting her, she would ramble on about what happened in my life since I was small up until even recent time points. And I had not mentioned one word to Cecilia about any of that, nor did Rhea know anything about the things that Cecilia mentioned, nor had I actually even admitted it to anybody else at that time point. Only I knew, except 
obviously for the people involved, but I mean, they were long in my past. So, um, I don't know how I'm going to talk about this in the book. Okay, well, for now, let me just say, um, Cecilia knew details, extreme, very accurate, extreme details of, uh, oh, fuck, I don't want to talk about this, um, Cecilia knew very extreme accurate details of my abuse since I was a child where it happened what happened how often it happened who did it um, the, she just spoke for I don't know how long without me saying a word about what had gone on in my life and my jaw basically dropped to the floor How, did, how is it possible for her to know so much? Or any of it, actually. Um, because I had not spoken a word to anybody my entire life. But she knew so much. So how is that? And I genuinely do ask that question. How does she know? But um, that's what started convincing me. Not the photos. And then... As the days and weeks went on, there was more. There were more minor things. There was a, a minor scenario where I was standing in her kitchen, and Cecilia went to her bedroom, came back with two biscuits, and she was already eating one. I could clearly see there was two different types of biscuits. It was a variety tin, and she handed me one of the biscuits, and she said to me. Yeah, I didn't want to get you the same one because I know you don't like ginger. And I looked at her and I said to her, still early days at that time point, I said to her, how did you know I don't like ginger? And she says, you should know by now, I just know things. A seemingly insignificant thing, but also not a common knowledge thing. That you go around telling people, you know. Um, she knew I didn't like the taste of ginger. Very, very strongly did not like the taste of ginger. So she did not offer me a ginger biscuit. Um, and then there were scenarios where when I would be at home, I would go out to the shops or I'd even do something at home. And I was always alone when I would leave Cecilia. And I would never relate anything to anybody about what I did because it was actually nothing important. So I didn't see a reason to talk about it. I mean, go to the shops, buy something specific, uh, like a unique belt, uh, belt, uh, belt buckle, yeah. Or a certain item of clothing, or I walked into a specific shop. Insignificant things that people did not know about. And then either later on that same day or the very next day when I'd see Cecilia, she would immediately bring it up in conversation. Um, that actually became a very, very regular thing. I could not do or go anywhere without Cecilia knowing exactly every detail. I mean, nobody was ever with me. I had never said anything to anybody because it wasn't important. Um, but she would always talk about it whenever I saw her. It was weird. I still don't know how she knew. Um, and she was always right. Always, always right. That is the weird thing. Now, not even once was she even wrong. Uh, not even slightly wrong. She would tell me in extreme detail. I eventually just got used to it. It became normal. It, yeah, it would look, it was honestly a pain. 
having your every move watched 24 7 was a pain but especially since you know the person watching you wanted to control your every move and everything you wore actually that bad so you felt like you were caged up and controlled even when you weren't with her um yeah it was i think paranoia started to set in there not that i had anything to hide it was just major pain but that's how Cecilia honestly started to convince me it wasn't the photos i believed the photos the supposed photos much more after these other things that she did but going to the photos these photos were actually still images taken from old movies uh, I only discovered that there were movies after I left Cecilia. I made it my mission to actually find every single movie that the, each photo was taken from. And I had found every single movie except for one. Which actually honestly still sometimes bother, bothers me still to this day. Even though I know it was from a movie. Um, I think you just want closure in every tiny possible way and in every tiny gap of a scenario like this but yeah uh that's how cecilia actually started to convince me and she just knew everything there was to know about a person without having been told by that person or any other person and the thing is it's easy to see her know stuff about someone else not really knowing how she could have got that information and bearing in mind that person could have also forgotten that they had mentioned it to Cecilia or someone else and that's how Cecilia found out but it's a whole different scenario or ball game when it happens to you especially when it comes to critical stuff that you never ever talk about because you could never bring yourself to talk about it never want to talk about it um actually consciously since childhood Refuse to talk about it, especially since you were threatened to not talk <laughs> by so many and so many times. Okay, too many other memories flashing.